All right. Thank you very much for uh, for coming back to see our tech. Uh, we want to actually uh, demonstrate uh, how you would actually virtualize an application using our technology. A lot of people ask us about what we do. We do our best to describe it, and then they ask us about what's different. We do our best to describe it. So we thought it'd probably be prudent to just show you how simple it is using our technology to take a traditional desktop application and host it to your own private cloud and then deliver it. And for today's demo, we brought three devices. So we've got a, an iPad, a Microsoft Surface, and a Samsung Chromebook. So we're gonna show you different clients accessing the same application. We're gonna show you the actual software that we've built on the server side down to one box. And this box, which is uh, manufactured by Oberlin, is traditionally a storage device. So it was a feat in itself to actually be able to convert it into a server. So without any more delays, I'll turn it over to our CTO, John Morelli, and our whiz kid, Brandon, in the background, who's gonna show you guys how this works. So John, it's all yours. Thank you. So we're gonna start right at the server level. We are logged in through a web page, and I'm gonna type in my administrator username and password, and log in. And right off the bat, I have a status of CPU usage, memory, my actual bandwidth, uh, my servers that are online. There are micro servers in this box right now. One is an HTML5 hosting server. Uh, we have our Wi-Fi connection, our network is up, and the IP address that we're running everything from. So we have also some metrics running. But I'm going to click through some of the uh, menus and then go back and actually install the application. So let's go to apps. And the appliance right now for demonstration came pre-installed with Corel Office, which will give you three applications, a PowerPoint type of application, a spreadsheet type of application, and a word processing type of application. We have Internet Explorer, also pre-installed, and we have one of Overland's applications called Snap Server Manager. We have an uninstall page, and right now there's no other applications installed, so there's nothing on the list. We have a user page, and we're gonna create just a dummy account. Right now, the box was designed to have 50 concurrent connections and licenses. So there's 10 registered usernames right now, so the count is left to 40. Let's create a new dummy account. We'll call it uh, test one presentation. Okay, so presentation, and we're gonna type in a password, and we're gonna add the account. It takes a couple seconds. This is because it creates an account that's also compatible with Windows domain clients and that's important for IT infrastructures where you can use the standard group policies that an administrator has already created. So now the count's down to 39 and we have an extra user in our list. Can you scroll down to the list? It's probably on page two. There we go, presentation. And it's offline, nobody's logged in. My general settings page is for administration of the network. We have a management page, which I can remotely shut down my servers. So the actual server itself, the main box, and the HTML5 micro server. We have our licenses page. So if a client buys the box as a basic unit and then wants to upgrade, they can purchase licenses online, type the key, and it will add them more users or more applications capability. Well, web access page, that is basically it's gonna take me out. As an administrator, I cannot log in and use applications. That's where the clients log in. So let's log back in as administrator. And let's go right into the apps page. And let's do an actual installation of one of our applications. So we're gonna actually install Microsoft Word at this point. Later, we're gonna also install AutoCAD, a trial version of AutoCAD. 
And after that, we're going to also virtualize a web page as an application. Two minutes. Yeah. You want to? Okay, so um, Thunderbird. Thunderbird. Thunderbird is a common application for checking your emails. It's like Outlook. And we're going to choose the file. So we chose the file from our local drive. So we have a USB plugged into the computer. Click Next. Yes, let's upload it. So right now, from the local computer, it's sending it to the server. And now we got to launch the session. So let's launch the session. So the session launched. You will notice there's no start button. There's no actual Windows environment. Let's click yes to the security settings. Let's go through the installation process. As it installs, it's also setting up and reading all the file names. This is important for us to create the icon. We click finish. We close the window. And now we have to launch the actual application. And the application is called Thunderbird.exe. Once we clicked it, we get the icon. We're going to click finish, refresh the page, and now Mozilla Thunderbird is now available. To publish this to our devices now, we must enable it as a web access. We click save. And now the application is installed. I'm going to grab. So that was a start to finish, virtualizing an application from beginning to end. That's the level of complexity or lack thereof that we built into the system. And you'll see now that this user that you just created has access to that application. That is a Sony, what is that? Sony Vio Windows 8 notebook. So and this and this is going to use Java client to access. And Thunderbird is now available on my local notebook. So 